Welcome to my new show. Cool stuff that my friends don't care about. Nobody cares, John Mark. This is a show about science and stuff that I think is really interesting, but for whatever reason, I have a hard time convincing my friends it's really cool. This week, we're gonna learn about the ears and your brains and how they work. There's a saying that biology is chemistry. Chemistry is really physics. Physics is math, and math is actually philosophy. And that, that works, right? Cells are really just a bunch of molecules reacting with each other. Chemistry is all about the forces of attraction between elements. And if you've ever taken a physics class, it's literally just equation after equation. In higher level math, those equations, that's the language of the universe. And when I look at science as a whole, it's more than just examining how the world works. Science is actually the journey into the creative imagination of God. It's a glimpse into his genius. The complexity, the beauty of the world, it's just mind-blowing. And I think most people go through life just kind of scratching the surface. And this show is an invitation to go deeper. And nothing demonstrates that point quite like our brain. This is Jeff Lickman. He runs a research lab at Harvard, and his dream is to map out every single synaptic connection in the brain. And he'll tell you he's got a long, long way to go. But his research gives us a picture of the brain like we have never seen before. He takes a tiny section of brain, like really tiny, he slices it into extremely thin pieces, and then uses an electron microscope to take a picture of each of those slices, and then he builds this three-dimensional model of this cube, and the results are mind-blowing. Construct a bunch of neurons in a cortical column in the cerebral cortex, and then we decided for one of those neurons, we would learn everything we possibly could about a thousand cubic microns around one apical dendrite of one pyramidal cell. So this little cylinder is everything inside one little region of the dendrite of one cell, just around it. And in the sense, because it's all surrounding that dendrite, every axon in there has a potential to innervate that particular dendrite. But what else is in there? It turns out there's a lot of stuff in that little region. There's about 675 synapses, 530 different axons. So I'm not sure if that made sense to you, but that red cell, that's, that's one neuron. And in just that tiny section that he highlighted, there are hundreds of connections. And all our neurons are firing as we take in the world. Some are telling their neighbors to react, some are telling them to calm down. And this one neuron takes all that information in and they decide, how am I gonna react? And in all of this noise that's happening, our consciousness rises. Now, before we finish, let's take a look at how our brains receive sound. There's so many inputs, but, but how, does, how do we take the pressure waves that are moving all throughout the air and convert it into something that our bodies can understand and process and make coherent? Check this out. The cochlea is shaped like a snail and is the size of a garden pea. It is filled with fluid, and the sound vibrations make this fluid ripple, which creates waves. Hair-like structures called stereocilia sit on top of hair cells and are grouped together as hair cell bundles inside the cochlea. The hair cells inside the cochlea ride these waves, and the hair bundles are moved. The hair bundle on top of the hair cell turns these movements into electrical signals. These stereocilia, the little ones, beat towards the big one called the kinocilium. It actually stretches the tip links and opens up these channels. Now, who comes in? Who comes in? Who's really rich on this area? Potassium. So whenever the stereocilia beat towards the kinocilium, it opens up these channels, and potassium starts flooding in to this area. You know there's another ion that's also really important, too? Because not only does potassium move in, but some certain types of divalent ions move in as well. Guess what else moves in? Calcium. So calcium is another one that's really important. So not only does potassium move in, but so can calcium. Now, this cell was originally at resting membrane potential. Right? It was just being stabilized by sodium potassium pumps and potassium leaky chimps. But look what starts happening. We start increasing the calcium in the cell, and we start increasing the potassium inside the cell. 
What is that going to do to the cell? It's going to depolarize the cell. So it's going to produce a change inside of the cell's membrane potential. What do I mean? It's going to lead to, again, depolarization. And as it becomes depolarized, guess what happens? Remember that calcium? As it becomes depolarized, remember the calcium that we said came in? There's kind of a special reason for it. Calcium actually comes over here. You know there's different types of synaptoproteins on the membrane on the vesicle? It stimulates those to actually fuse together. So when calcium helps to stimulate the fusion of these actual vesicles with the actual basal, basal lateral cell membrane. So now look what happens. This is going to connect. And after they connect, guess who can start coming out here into this area? This chemical that we're going to release is going to be a primary neurotransmitter here called glutamate. So let me summarize. A pressure wave in the air mechanically moves bones in our ear, which cause little hairs to sway back and forth, which causes these little gates to open. And potassium can come in, and they open a gate for calcium to come in, which causes neurotransmitters to be released, which trigger the neighboring cells to fire. And pretty soon, we're all the way back to our red neuron, trying to process the hundreds of conflicting signals it's getting. And somehow, it all works together so we can talk and play music and express the deep emotions and thoughts that our brains concoct. If you want to see the videos I've referenced in their entirety, go to johnmarkdyer.com. I hope I've convinced you to care a little bit more about science in your brain. And maybe next time you use your ears, you'll stop for a second in awe and wonder with new appreciation for the world God has placed us in. Until next time, I'm John Mark, and this is Cool Stuff My Friends Don't Care About.